The BRSCC BMW Compact Cup is brought to you by Nankang Tyres and Gas Shocks. Welcome to the 2019 Nankang Tyres BMW Compact Cup season and opener. We're in a very sunny Brands Hatch and following on from last year we have Stephen Daly joining us trying to get a triple crown this year but I think he's going to have an interesting time with Ian Jones starting ahead of him on pole position. Now I'm going to hand it over to Andy McEwen, our commentator for the season, to see his opinions on the matter. It's going to be good, isn't it? We're going to see some really, really good racing this year. I spoke to Ian Jones actually in the paddock a moment ago. He's done no testing over the winter, had no idea how quick he'd be here at Brands Hatch, stuck it straight on pole position. So we saw last year, Stephen Daly had some of the fiercest competition he's ever had to face in the championship, and I think that's going to continue to be the case in 2019. There are so many potential race winners, and all of them will be feeling that they can uh, fight for the championship. Yeah. It's going to be a difficult one for you, but you need to get your little self up in that commentary box, so we're going to hand it straight over to him with all the action. Thanks very much, Lindsay. Well, here is how the grid lines up then for our opening race of the season. It is Ian Jones and Stephen Daly on the front row together for round one with David May and Mark Skeets on row two. Paul Maguire makes his debut straight onto the third row alongside Tom Griffiths with Lee Dendy Sadler, another quick debutante on row four alongside his teammate Alan Caulfield. Then it's Matthew Parks and Steve Chandler, Oliver Faller and Rudy McMillan round out the top dozen. This, believe it or not, is only about two thirds of the grid though. We have an oversubscribed entry here at Brands Hatch, which is always nice to see and it means we're back to the trusted group system. This is groups A and B. Group C will be up a little bit later on in the day. Everyone races twice though. Everyone races each other once, so you all get the same amount of track time and the same opportunity to score points. But uh, it is Ian Jones and Stephen Daly, arguably the two championship protagonists who line up on the front row together for this opening race of the season. On board with Aaron Morgan then. The red lights are on. They go out now and the 2019 Nankang Tyres BMW Compact Cup is underway. It's a good start made by Mark Skeet from the outside of row number two. He will challenge the leading two down towards Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. On board with Aaron Morgan as he's immediately embroiled in the midfield squabbles. And they round the first corner with Jones in front, side by side for second. Daly on the inside for Druids. Skeets to the outside. Mark Skeets remarkably did not get a podium result all year last year. And he's straight into the top three here in the early stages with Alessandro Albano to the outside line at Druids. It's a case of trying to find a, a bit of clear track more than anything else here with a 32-car grid for the opening race of the season. Jones leading the way, though. Lots of locking up down the hill on board with Aaron Morgan now as he tries to negotiate the left-hander on cold tyres. Always difficult on the first lap of the race. But it looks as though everyone is touch wood safely around the first few corners coming around to the completion now of the opening lap of the season there's Lee Dendy Sadler former uh, front running veteran of the BRSCC's Ford Fiesta Championship making the switch to rear wheel drive machinery this year he is ahead of uh, his teammate Alan Caulfield having started one position ahead of him he's now two places ahead at the end of lap one back with Albano now who flies over from Italy to race in the uh, compact cup showing his dedication to what is a thrilling championship and it's no surprise to see why drivers come from far and wide to race in what is one of the most entertaining series in the UK. Already the battles are starting to develop though as we go up the hill. Alan Caulfield there making a move. He goes up the inside um, of someone going in towards Druids. Adam Reid I think that was. Yes it is Adam Reid the 67 car who's had a good start but he's now starting to slip backwards slightly. He will fend off though Ray McDowell in the number four car as they drop down the hill left-hander again at Graham Hill. Ben is all getting very close indeed back with Aaron Morgan, the only driver in the field who uses hand controls to uh, handle the car around the circuit. That must make life very, very busy indeed inside the cockpit, but he's been doing this for a number of years now. And he's getting quicker every time he hits the track. Good to see him well and truly in amongst the battles here in the early stages. Out of clear ways we go then for the second time and immediately Stephen Daly and Ian Jones have made a break here at the head of the field. Ian Jones having to go defensive to try and keep the two-time reigning champion Stephen Daly at bed Remarkably, Stephen has won the last five BMW Compact Cup races to have been held here at Brands Hatch. He won both races here last year, both races in 2017, and won the final race in 2016. So uh, he's fairly handy around the short indie circuit. There's a big lockup for someone there at Paddock Hill Bend. 
I think they got away with it, but uh, Stephen Daly, a man on a mission here to try and keep this winning run intact. But Ian Jones, who really does fancy himself as one of the championship contenders this year, he had a few issues mid-season last season, which meant that he finished outside the top 10 in points. But we know that he's quicker than that. We know that he's capable of winning races, just hasn't yet been able to piece together a solid, consistent championship charge. But he's starting off the 2019 season in the right way anything gapping Stephen Daly a bit more towards the end of this third lap across the line they go then Daly and Jones a class of their own at the moment in this race Jones though needs to try and build up a gap if at all possible here from uh, Stephen Daly Ian Jones was three times a winner last year nine times on the podium but just as I said had those issues mid-season which counted him out of the championship equation Mark Skeets is arguably the busiest man on the grid trying to keep David May behind him but also who else have we got in there Paul Maguire Tom Griffiths and uh, right at the back of that group I think it's Matt Parks isn't it so that's a five car train fighting for third position because they're dicing away they're losing time to the leading two lots of uh, white smoke coming out of the back of uh, Stephen Daly's car that was happening in qualifying as well though. I don't think it's anything particularly to worry about but uh, Stephen Daly certainly seems to be going quickly let's just hope that there's no oil or anything being burnt off that he might need for later on in the race but for the time being he looks quick and he's sticking with Ian Jones albeit not really quite close enough to attack this time but a bit scrappy there for Daly remember this is a new car for Stephen this year he sold his old car so he's trying to get used to a new machine and someone spun there up at clearways and I think unfortunately has been collected yes that's Oliver Faller who I think did the collecting in the 18 car I didn't quite catch who the other one might was it may have been Stephen Chandler possibly who had spun in front of the pack and if one or both of those cars can't get going again we may have our first safety car intervention of the season that would be a shame though because it will be this battle needs to be put on ice so Martin Gatsby goes around now and that is a very spectacular spin and unfortunately he has just nosed it into the gravel trap and that means that he will also likely be stranded at the side of the racetrack now so a lively half a lap or so of racing there in the midfield Martin Gadsby was on for a decent result there having uh, qualified fairly well 15th on the grid he was now there is I think Stephen Chandler's car there's a lot of fluid on the track the car does not appear to be going anywhere and unfortunately yes it is Stephen Chandler the 77 car is going no further now, if that's not a dangerous position, I don't know what is. So we may well have to have a safety car here. And that is a shame because battles were just starting to heat up throughout the field, really. I don't think they ever cooled down in the midfield, but with at least two, maybe three cars now parked at the side of the road, I think we are going to have, yes, our first safety car period of the day and of the season. Unfortunately there for Martin Gatsby, he did a brilliant job of saving the spin, but then just ran out of grass and tarmac and found his way into the gravel trap and as you can see he's perfectly okay he's lost his rear bumper somewhere hopefully someone will pick that up for him between races but uh, Martin who really does enjoy racing in the compact cup as indeed to most of the drivers if not all of them but Martin really is enthusiastic about his racing and that's a shame to see his first race of the season end in the kitty litter so the safety car is out it gives us a chance to take a, a bit of a deep breath which is much needed for me and I think for all of the drivers that are still out there back on board with Alessandro Albano here and, uh, the number 11 car that started down in 21st I think he has gained some ground from that position but as you can see at the front of the field that big gap that Jones and Daly have built up has now evaporated Mark Skeets will be right back with them then David May with the homage to the works BMW livery on uh, his car that is a very very good looking number 93 machine he started third he's lost one position here Mark Skeets uh, swapped positions on the first lap but Mark was very nearly in the lead of the race going into Paddock Hill then got off the line extremely well did the Irishman and uh, Skeetsy, as he's affectionately known by the rest of the paddock is in a podium position here early on and I can't say enough about Paul Maguire Paul is a, a former front runner in Mark 1 Master of X5 racing so he has success in uh, his racing career but this is his first ever appearance in the compact cup and these are tricky little cars to get to grips with sometimes particularly if you're used to the lightweight and nimble racing that you see in uh, mx5 championships around the country these things are a little bit of a different beast i've spoken to a few drivers who have raced both master mx5s and bmw compact cup cars and honestly the main difference the main challenge that a lot of them have noticed is the fact that you're now racing with a roof over your head and whilst that's something that most of us take for granted since most of us will drive with a roof over our head most on uh, on the roads every day for these guys 
and you've spent years and years racing an open cockpit car, it can sometimes be a little bit disconcerting to be sort of closed in in a, in a, a tin top. But um, clearly, Paul McGuire not phased by that and is getting well, not even quicker and quicker. He started off very quickly, fifth place here in the early running. Tom Griffiths behind him, and then Matt Parks, who can blow a bit hot and cold sometimes, can't he, Matt? He had that breakthrough victory last year at Snetterton in that thrilling dice that he had with the eventual champion Stephen Daly. We really thought at that early stage of the year that Parks was going to become a, a championship threat, but um, whilst he did end up finishing second in the championship, he was some 53 points adrift of Daly at the end of the year held on to his second place in the championship though from Tom Griffiths and he and Tom really both proving that consistency is what can, uh, can put you in the championship pick. You don't necessarily have to win every race uh, and particularly this season if we continue to see this group format in use which we expect to see throughout most of the year then you know you're going to have lots of different winners that stops one driver from dominating throughout the year and potentially will make consistent point scoring all the more significant so watch for Mark Skeet's pro so Mark for uh, Matt Park's progress excuse me on the restart there is Matt 38 car just ahead of Lee Dendy Sadler the first of the white and purple cars and immediately behind him is Alan Caulfield who's having one of his best runs for quite some time Alan Caulfield again a bit of a veteran of the championship now he's been around for quite a few seasons and both of those cars looking resplendent they're right together on the track as well so it's a great photo opportunity for those on the pit wall and around the circuit a glimpse of Oliver Fowler's car there in the pit lane. Uh, Oliver, number 18 car, started just outside the top 10, but unfortunately that uh, contact with clearways has put paid to any chance of a top 10 finish in this first race of the season. So the light's still on on the BMW safety car. The field of BMW Compact Cup cars are filing in behind. You can see the reason for this fairly lengthy delay because not only did the cars need to be moved, indeed that process is still ongoing, but there was a lot of fluid, a lot of debris, a lot of dirt that had been scattered across the racing line up there at Clearways, which also needs to be swept away. So unfortunately, this is going to take another lap or so, I think, to, uh, to get everything cleared up. I mentioned that this was a group system and that means that we haven't got all of our potential front runners out on track right now. Race two, which is coming up a bit later, we'll have the likes of Ben Huntley, Wayne Flint, Keith Towers, Mike Doble. Uh, so a lot more potential front runners, not only in the races, but in the championship, have still yet to race today. So the points scored by the likes of Jones and Daly and Skeets in this race will be significant, but they could be matched potentially by those that are coming up in the later race because you score the same amount of points for a victory regardless which race you're in so it's 50 points for a win plus one for the fastest lap and uh, that fastest lap at the moment belongs to ian jones and uh, ian jones a 57.7 back towards Paddock Hill Ben, Daly going with him, but so too on this occasion is Mark Skeets. He's built a bit of a gap now over David May, who is the man doing all of the defending into Paddock Hill Ben this time. There is David May in fourth position, a little way back, but leading to resuming their battle from before the safety car with Jones in front, Daly in second position. Jones and Daly were actually, oh, uh, is there an issue there for Paul Maguire? I think there is, and there are cars off further back. Oh, that's Alan Caulfield, one of them. And I fear the other one on its side is Lee Dendy Sadler and Ray McDowell is off as well. So what on earth has happened there on the restart? Oh dear boys, we waited all that time to go racing again. We get into the first corner and there is another incident. And unfortunately, well, we made the comment earlier on that Lee Dendy Sadler and Alan Caulfield were running together. And I worry whether or not they made contact there going into Paddock Hill. Ben Ray McDowell, though, was some way further back. So quite how he got involved in all of that, I do not know. Anyway, the race is continuing for the time being. There will be yellow flags out at Paddock Hill Bend. I'm hoping against hope that we don't need another safety car, but it may well be the case that the safety car is scrambled once again. Across the line we go, though, and it is Jones onto the final lap of the race anyway. So I think they're going to cover it under yellow flags for the time being. Jones leading the way. Daly throws it through Paddock Hill Bend may not be able to overtake through the uh, yellow flag zone, but you've still got to keep some sort of speed up. You are supposed to reduce your speed a little bit uh, for the safety of the drivers and marshals who are dealing with the cleanup of the, uh, the incident. But uh, Daly not really able to stay with Jones anyway. Jones the leader down the hill. Daly second. Skeets has dropped back now in third. I don't think we'd like to see a change for the top three positions here in the final half a lap or so. And Ian Jones looks as though he's on his way to the opening victory of the season and he's going to end this five-race winning streak here at Brands Hatch for Stephen Daly. Uh, 
and uh, Stephen will be looking to fight back in the race a little bit later on. We're up through clear ways we go, over the cement dust that was laid down after the incident there that brought out the safety car in the first place, and towards the chequered flag will go our first race winner of 2019. It is Ian Jones who flashes the headlights and wins race number one here at Brands Hatch. Stephen Daly comes home in second place. He'll still be happy with those points. Skeets in third. David May fourth. Then Tom Griffiths in fifth. Matt Parks, Gordon McMillan, Mikey Doval, Rudy McMillan, and Adam Reed in tenth. And those drivers all gaining from the fact that we lost two of our top ten drivers at the start of the penultimate lap of the race. Aaron Morgan, look at that, 11th place for the Allied Mobility sponsored car. Great result for him ahead of Nick Edmund, Andy Coombs, Tim Scott Andrews, and Phil Sharp to round out the top 15. A few non-finishers, unfortunately. Paul Maguire, we saw slowing after the restart. Don't know what the issue was there. Lead Andy Sadler, Alan Caulfield, and Ray McDowell ended their race in the Paddock Hill Bend gravel trap. David Sharp was also a non-finisher. And of course, Stephen Chandler and Oliver Faller involved in the safety car inducing incident a little bit earlier on. Ian, what a way to start a season. Perfect. Couldn't ask for any more. Pole in the win. Um, shame about safety car, because I think me and Stephen could have had a good battle, and that's what we're here for, really. But, yeah, good start. Stephen, you've come second. Are you happy? Yeah, I mean, you've got to be delighted to be second in the first round. I mean, it's not all about winning in the first round. I mean, I'd love to have won, but I know what Ian's capable of, and I know what not to do with Ian. So it's, it's a case of just... I knew after lap two it wasn't going to work. I knew he had the legs on me, so it was just set up for where I am, take the points, and... Let's go on the next round. Fantastic race. I mean, I'm chuffed a bit, I have to say. Um, had a great start. Had a little bit of a rub with um, Stephen. But uh, as soon as they got, those guys got away, they were gone. But, um, yeah, you know, they. I'm like 53 this year. I'm chuffed a bit to be keeping up with these youngsters, to be honest with you. So, uh, it's, uh, yeah, next race coming up. I'm in that next race. So, I've just got to go and try and do one better. It's race two here for the Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup. And I'm just having a quick catch up with Stephen Daly here. Now, Stephen, you've got one of your nemesis from last year, Ben, starting right behind you. Yeah, well, we've not got Ian Jones to deal with in this one, so we're, we're quite happy with that. Ian's got a serious pace this weekend, but I hope he does do well in his second race. Uh, ben Huntley, yeah, Ben's fast. Just see how it goes, really. Uh, me and Ben are good friends, and, and we race hard with each other, so we'll just have to see how it goes. So you're feeling a little bit of pressure? Not a lot, just a little. Yeah, I mean, obviously with the new car, I'm, I'm, I'm taking my time to get into it. I mean, it's not exactly the same as my old car. They've got different suspension, so we're all kind of on a level playing field this year. But, you know, we'll get it. We'll get it. Well, wish you the best of luck. So we're going to hand it straight over to Andy to run you through all the action. Thanks, Lindsay. Groups B and C up this time. So Group B with their second race of the day. Group C making their first appearance. Stephen Daly on pole this time with Ben Huntley alongside him. Mark Skeets and Wayne Flint make up row two with Tom Griffiths and Mike Doble on the third row. Alan Caulfield and Keith Towers are next ahead of Stephen Chandler and Luke Browse. Hopefully Stephen's got his car fixed after race one. Reedy McMillan and David Chapman round out the top dozen with Mikey Doble and Matt Flowers next in line. Then Aaron Morgan, Tom Langford, Ray McDowell and Will Davison who has BMW racing experience in the past but not in this championship. Then Nick Edmund and Jim Barrett to round out the top 20. So for the likes of Stephen Daly, Mark Skeets and Tom Griffiths, this is their final race of the day. But for Ben Huntley, Wayne Flint, Mike Doble, basically all of the even starting positions, they are Group C and this is their first of two races today. And they will then go head to head with the Group A cars that we saw in race one uh, a little bit later on in the day. So this is Stephen Daly's last chance to get a race victory. There was a brief on board look with David Chapman, a few on boards throughout the field in this race that we'll catch up with once we get going, which happens any second now hopefully when the red lights go out there they go we're away and racing for race number two of the day at Brands Hatch and who is going to get into Paddock Hill Bend first we'll start by Chapman further back and Mikey Doble also making ground up the inside line there three and four best already Tom Langford there with a bit of contact I think from Matt Flowers on board with Tom looking across towards the driver's position he turns through Paddock Hill Bend David Chapman the yellow car in front of us as they make their way up the hill into Druid's corner for the first time of asking hard on the brakes trying to find that gap in the traffic to pick your way through David Chapman fighting the wheel there as he comes through Druids he's up the inside of I think that is Stephen Chandler isn't it yes who has got the car fixed bit of a lock up there for Chapman but he will go through and uh, Stephen Chandler losing a position David Chapman former front runner in the Master X5 Super Cup he also raced here in the Compact Cup last season but didn't quite get making it to the top 10 so he'll be certainly setting that as his target here early on in the weekend Keith Towers is his next target we're on board with Keith who does not see a yellow car firing up the inside so clearly David 
back down on that move in fact Keith Towers making a move all of his own he's up the inside of Alan Caulfield now he's got the car cleared of gravel after his race one excursion battle for second is on there Wayne Flint look at this a rejuvenated Wayne Flint he's already the lead Masters contender in this race and he was giving Ben Huntley the bump draft down the pit straight Ben one of the younger drivers in the series getting quicker and quicker though all the time and Mark Skeets getting more and more sideways as he went through uh, sorry Mark, not Mark Skeets Wayne Flint getting more and more sideways through Paddock Hill Ben and in fact oh there's a problem there's a problem for Wayne Flint the car is slowing and I fear his race may be done just as he was starting to show some real promise there with uh, Aaron Morgan Ray McDowell filling his wing mirrors but where is Wayne Flint no oh, he's still there but he's certainly dropped back now hasn't he into the clutches of Mike Doble he just couldn't get a gear there in that brief moment. He got them all sideways, and as he was all arms and elbows, maybe couldn't quite get the car into gear, so he seems to have picked up the speed again now. David Chapman hammering the curb through Surtees. As behind him, the battle rages between Mikey Doble, that's Doble Jr., and the walking wounded Stephen Chandler. The car may not look pretty, but it, it is at least moving, and the wheels all seem to be pointing vaguely in the right direction, so good work from the team there. It was a quick turnaround between races, and they've got the car out there in the more or less one piece and going pretty quickly side by side battle here towards Paddock Hill Bend once again and round the outside that was a really nice move there made by uh, Mark Skeets and he will pick up a position he started third though so he's lost quite a bit of ground that's why I paused for a moment there because Skeets he was a bit further down the order than I thought he'd be started third he was actually the top master of the grid but Wayne Flint who started alongside him is now right in front of him so that's the fight for the Masters lead for those more experienced in age who race in the championship and it's very hotly contested and often the top masters drivers are inside the top three or five positions in each race anyway so it's not that difficult to keep track of them and that's something we will aim to do as the year goes on getting back in with the alan caulfield and keith towers battle as they turn into clearways you can see the dink in the driver's side door there for caulfield which is we presume a legacy of the accident in race number one back to chapman though it's a circuit that he's got lots of experience at. Says he really loves driving here at Brands Hatch. And uh, as I say, he's going an awful lot qu more quickly this year than he did 12 months ago. Keith Towers in front of him, though, making a move on the inside of Alan Caulfield. Caulfield leaves him plenty of room. Maybe a bit too much room, actually. Runs out almost into the gravel trap in uh, trying to avoid contact there. I don't understand why, though, after the contact he had there in race number one. But Towers is up the inside to uh, Druid, and I think he's going to go through. Will he, or will Caulfield hang uh, tough on the outside? No, he won't. So Towers will go through. In fact, no, Caulfield is back on the inside, and now finally gives second best to Keith Towers. So Towers up a position. Caulfield a bit slow off Graham Hill Bend as a result. And so now David Chapman sees the opportunity, dives to the inside towards Surtees. Is he late enough on the brakes? If you even do break into Surtees, well, they run through side by side. It was probably more of a lift on the throttle in uh, normal circumstances through that left hander. Maybe a dab on the brakes that time because they were side by side. Either way, Chapman does not go through, and that will disappoint him because he can see Keith Towers escaping up the road now through the gears in the slipstream trying to get the run to Paddock Hill Bend but not really close enough I don't think to attack on this case is David Chapman but uh, David in the car that traditionally is raced by Phil Adcock and you may remember that car because 12 months ago it ended its qualifying session its first qualifying session of the season on its roof in that gravel trap there to the right at Paddock Hill Bend on the outlap for qualifying and Phil Adcock he has a good laugh about it these days but I'm sure at the time wasn't particularly pleased with the way that his season started but he is very happy to see that car up towards the sharp end of the Grid here this weekend at Brands Hatch. He'll be back in the car, we believe, at Alton Park, Phil, just having uh, a weekend on the sidelines here at Brands Hatch and enjoying seeing his car going quickly. There's the uh, 17 car, Will Davison, former production BMW champion, so he's used to racing these sort of cars, but not a BMW compact in the past. He's uh, started this race down in 18 plays, saw there's a car in the gravel trap there, didn't quite catch the number as they came through clear. Now that might result in a safety car, possibly. The car is quite close to the edge of the circuit. David Chapman will be hoping not because he's started to size up Alan Caulfield, but also has Stephen Chandler not far behind him. Stephen refuses to say die this weekend. Mikey Doble also in the mix as the field strings its way through Paddock Hill Bend. Chapman actually really is starting to feel the pressure now from Stephen Chandler, who forces the yellow and green number 19 machine to defend the inside line, and Chapman trying to attack and defend here, which is always a difficult position to be in get past Caulfield quickly then he might be able to escape the road I would suggest he probably can he's good off Graham Hill Bend his chap and carry some good speed along the Cooper straight but it's not really a long enough straight for him to take full advantage of that and of course there are yellow flags out at the next corner clearways which is the next obvious overtaking uh, point on the circuit Chapman with a wide line in oh it's, oh, it's Luke Browse Luke Browse has gone off in the 84 car 
So uh, no sign of a safety car just yet, though. They're, they're leaving the uh, corner of the yellow flags. And Tom Langford, as he races his way across the start finish line, this little group of four providing some really good entertainment. They're all very close together. Through Paddock Hill Bent, they will go once more. And Chapman again having to defend there from Chandler. And that means that since he goes in on such a tight line through Paddock Hill Bent, he's a bit slow on the exit. And so Chandler may have had the opportunity to dive up the inside at Druid. But Chapman, showing his circuit knowledge, knows exactly where to defend and how to do it successfully. And just stops the car on the apex at Druid. But this is really holding him and that entire group up. Chandler having a look at the inside, has a big dive up the inside of Graham Hill Bend, and uh, Chapman thankfully saw him coming, left him lots of room. He's on the grass, though, as they race wheel to wheel down the straight, almost a bit of contact as they head towards Surtees, and Chapman, I think he's going to have to give two places up. Yes, he is. Look, Chandler goes through. In the end, though, the positions stay as they were, so Tobel at the head of the train of cars. This is for eighth position, so Tobel is eighth, Chandler is ninth, Chapman is tenth, and Alan Caulfield, poor Alan Caulfield, I've got booked on the last few laps. He is uh, down outside the top ten now. It's not turned into a brilliant afternoon so far for Alan Caulfield. Let's see whether or not that improves throughout the rest of this, his final race of the day. With Tom Langford now, you can see how much closer he is to Chapman and Caulfield in front. Up the hill, breaking just at the end of the pit lane there, over the hump in the road. Very easy to unsettle the rear of the car, but some drivers use that hump in the road to actually get the car a bit sideways. So you have to drive these cars sometimes intentionally sideways to get them to go around the corner. Meanwhile, across the start-finish line, that is a battle going on a bit further down the order. That's Reese Clayden and getting very, very intimate indeed with the 164 car of Thomas Middleton. What did I say about the fighting being close up and down the order? These two started outside the top 20, Middleton 24th and Clayden 25th, and they are still banging wing mirrors as they head towards Paddock Hill Bend. But that is a familiar looking car of Reese Clayton. That is, of course, the car that uh, took Stephen Daly to two championships in the last two years. It's Reese Clayton now making his first forays into motorsport. You can see the novice cross on the back of his uh, white and orange 666 car. Reese Clayton, I'm sure, with the KC Motorsport squad behind him, will improve that speed as the year goes on. And uh, it won't be long before we're talking about Reese inside the top 10 or 15 cars, I think, in the field. He's definitely got potential. And uh, as I said, Stephen Daly and the KC Motorsport squad know what they're doing. They will know how to tune the car up. That car we know has winning pedigree. And it's just a case of getting Reese a little bit closer to the pace now uh, throughout the rest of the 2019 season. Just in front of them, in fact, is John Attard in the other uh, Casey Motorsport car. Casey Motorsport very busy in uh, 2018. There is John, former Ford Puma racer as well. In fact, I'd say they're catching John slightly here. John did start behind them on the grid. Looks as though he might just be about to lose a couple of more positions before the end of the race. But great squabbles wherever you look. And this is why you really need to come and watch these races trackside to fully appreciate the level of uh, excitement throughout the field. I do urge you to get yourself to a, a Combat Cup race meeting near you at some point this year. They're well worth the visit. There is Stephen Daly, though. And Stephen Daly has had a much easier time of it in his second race of the day. He is over four seconds clear now of Ben Huntley, who has been setting decent lap times, though. And his fastest lap is only a couple of tenths slower than Daly's, but Daly seems to have got better at Ben in this uh, race. But Ben will be back out again in race three later on to try and get his first victory of the year, potentially. He'll have to go up against Ian Jones to do it, though, as the smoky Stephen Daly goes past three cars now in the gravel and clearways. So <laughs> I don't know what's been going on at clearways, but it's been the action spot in both of the first two races today. Three cars stuck at the side of the road now. Stephen Daly, though, goes through the yellow flag zone unimpeded. Now we're back with Tom Langford and... I think that's David Chapman in front of us, which means that I think Langford's got past Alan Caulfield somewhere, because Alan was the man directly in front of him. Oh, and that's Alan Caulfield. That is Alan Caulfield. And he's tangled up with, is that Will Davidson? Couldn't quite see who that was that he's, uh, yes, I think it is the 17 car, Will Davidson, who, well, that looks like a fairly substantial shunt. And unfortunately, it's Alan's second one of the day. And I just mentioned that he'd lost a position. He clearly lost some more, because he and uh, Davidson were several positions apart. The way that is not the way they wanted their race to finish. I think Gordon McMillan may have been involved in that as well. So a three-car incident at Surtees. That means there are now potentially six cars off the road in that final sector. So we may well see a safety car come out, or since we're near the end of the race anyway, maybe a, a premature checkered flag. That's a shame because we've seen some great racing. We didn't want it to be interrupted by late race safety cars, but. Uh, it's a bit of a BMW graveyard now at the end of the lap. And indeed, Stephen Daly is going on to the last lap anyway. So um, 
they will probably elect to keep it under the yellow flags, but that means absolutely no overtaking now at the end of the lap. Not that that will concern Stephen Daly. The only cars that he has to overtake are lapped cars, which are dutifully staying out of his way by the looks of it. Up the hill into Drew as he goes, and yet the back markers really staying out of his way, and indeed each other's way, uh, through the right-hander. Stephen Daly looking for his first win of the year, his sixth win here at Brands Hatch in the last three visits. It's not quite going to be the double for the third year right on the bounce, with Ian Jones denying him the victory in race one. The Jones got in this race. Stephen Daly's life made a little bit easier, as he alluded to in the pre-race interview with Lindsay. But I do think that the likes of Ben Hutton are going to be a bit of a thorn in Stephen's side this year. Ben in second place here. That's some solid points for him. And he is definitely going to be targeting the championship. They will all, though, have to beat this man, Stephen Daly, who crosses the line to take his first victory of 2019. And the double reigning champion will be right in the hunt for the championship lead, leaving Brands Hatch. Ben Huntley is second, Tom Griffiths is third. Mark Skeets in fourth position wins the Masters with Wayne Flynn fifth, then Keith Towers, Mike and Mikey Doble seventh and eighth with Stephen Chandler ninth, and David Chapman getting his first ever top ten in the championship with tenth place. Tom Langford, Ray McDowell, Matt Flowers, Aaron Morgan and Jim Barrett next up. We'll see Aaron Morgan in the top 15 in both races ahead of Simon Welch and the rest filing in behind. We lost unfortunately quite a few. Mike Bayliss, Alan Caulfield, Gordon McMillan, Will Davison, Luke Browse, Rudy McMillan, Nick Edmund and James Stanbury. That's not even the end of the list because Andy Coombs was excluded from the result so he's also not classified as a finisher well, you said you wanted a one and two and you've managed to achieve it yeah i mean that's fantastic massive credit to the kc motorsport guys the car's absolutely fantastic it was a lot better in race two there would have loved the race with ian jones ian jones gets his crack at the next race so wish him the very best of luck he can walk away from this weekend with the championship lead so i mean that's what the championship is all about is keeping it close all year and that's what's going to happen, that's what it's looking like. Ben, you must be extremely happy with that result. Yeah, I am. I mean, Brands Hatch isn't really my strong circuit, so to come away with a solid podium and a good haul of points for the first round, I'm over the moon, to be honest. That was a good result for you. Yeah, especially at this place. This time last year, we came away with a, a ninth and a DNF, so to come away here with fifth and third, I'm, I'm ecstatic with. The third and final race of the day, about to get underway then here at Brands Hatch. And it is going to be Ben Huntley who lines up on pole for this one with Ian Jones alongside. This is Ian Jones's chance potentially to take the championship lead away from Stephen Daly. Daly has had a first and a second in his two races. He's not in this race though, so Ian Jones, who won his earlier race, if he can win this one, he will be ahead in the points. But he does not start on pole position. Ben Huntley, who was runner-up in his previous race, will have that honour. If he wins the race, we'll have a three-way tie potentially for the championship lead. So it's all very close in the early stages. Huntley and Jones row one with Wayne Flint and David May set to do battle for the Masters on row two. Mike Doble and Paul Maguire, hopefully with his issues from race one sorted, they're on row three ahead of Keith Towers and lead Andy Sadler. Luke Browse, Matt Parks, David Chapman out again in this one on row six with Oliver Faller. Then Matt Flowers and Adam Reed, Tom Langford and Martin Gadsby with hopefully a rear bumper attached now. Then Will Davison and David Sharp. Jim Barrett, Tim Scott Andrews are next. They round out the top 20 ahead of Simon Welch and Alessandro Albano. Thomas Middleton and Brendan Murphy are on the 12th row together ahead of John King and Phil Sharp. Adrian Pace, Saranga Sofisrari, then James Stanbury and John Williams round out the top 30 with Craig Arkell at the back of the field. So this has been... A busy old day of racing. Now, there are a couple of gaps, I notice, on the grid. I don't think Lead Andy Sadler is there. And possibly Paul Maguire. Yeah, Paul Maguire's not there either. So Maguire and Andy Sadler have not got their issues sorted from earlier on. And the rest of them are away in racing, though, as the lights go out for the final time at Brands Hatch. We'll start from Tom Langford in the middle of the field. David Chapman decisively chops over to the inside line as they drop into Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. Three and four abreast further back. That won't work, boys. You'll have to sort that one out. There's contact, in fact, for the race lead. Look at Ben Huntley up the inside of Ian Jones. There was definitely paint traded as they came out of Paddock Hill Bend. And Huntley defending the race lead for all he's worth here. Ian Jones trying to go around the outside. This is a really significant battle. And Jones has got the inside line down towards Graham Hill Bend. And I think he's going to go through. So Ben Huntley, who had the chance from pole position there to uh, control the pace of the race, but he hasn't stayed in front for long. And Ian Jones has found his way past. On board with Simon Welch, who's in for a busy race, I think, in the midfield as is ever the case. Simon, the 76 car, winds his way down the Cooper Strait for the first time. Dave Chapman in behind Mikey Doble. Side by side, battling further back. That is uh, Phil Sharp. The, sorry, David Sharp, excuse me. Number 40 car, the purple and orange car on the outside line there. And who's that he's doing battle with? Uh, didn't quite catch. I think it might well have been uh, Jim Barrett, possibly. 
Yes, it's Scott Andrews, one of the two that he was side by side with. Anyway, up towards Paddock Hill Bend we go at the start of the second lap of the race. Still side by side battles right the way through the field. It's Jones that leads the way. It's going to be second. David May in third. So David May has got himself ahead of Wayne Flint. That's for the lead of the Masters category. But Wayne there, the 55 car, is right on his tail. So that's also going to be a race long battle, I think. And they're both getting a bit boxed in here behind Ben Huntley in second place, who at the moment cannot live with the pace of Ian Jones. But no one has been able to live with the pace of Ian Jones. In qualifying, he was a quarter of a second quicker than anybody else uh, in the qualifying session. And it was Ben Huntley who set the, fast, the uh, second fastest qualifying time. And uh, he was actually some three tenths quicker than Stephen Daly. So really, really strong speed this weekend for Ian Jones. He's quite a character and uh, a quick driver as well with it. There's Matt Parks. This is a bit more like it for Matt. He's in fifth place now with Keith Towers behind him in sixth as they come out towards the completion of lap number two. And it's a five-car train, really, for second place. Then it's Mikey Doble and David Chapman with Tom Langford behind and everybody else filing in as well. There is the battling uh, behind between David Sharp and the rest of the field. And, uh, oh, it's Luke Browse, excuse me. 84 was the car that he was side by side with earlier on. Luke Browse, who started this one in ninth place. Up the hill goes the Masters lead battle then. The white, red and blue car with the orange wheels. That's David May, the Masters leader. And right behind him is uh, Wayne Flint. David May was the Masters champion last year as well. He beat Mark Skeets and Keith Towers to that honour by quite a few points actually in the end. 504 points for May, 470 for Mark Skeets. So 34 points, the advantage at the end of the year for May. He's only one position though ahead of Mark Skeets in this race. Or, sorry, not Mark Skeets, Wayne Flint, excuse me. Skeets won the first Masters race and the second as well. So there's no doubt about it. Skeets will be the Masters leader in the championship leading Grants Hatch question is who's going to be second in the early stages of the championship. Just the three cars fighting for second place now. Huntley, May and Flint have rather gapped Matt Parks behind. Matt Parks has still got Keith Towers with his headlights ablaze. Then Mike Dover and David Chapman and the rest side by side there a little bit further back. Adam Reid there I think was trying to go around the outside of somebody into Paddock Hill Bend. That rarely works though. Drew it again. David May sandwiched between Huntley and uh, Flint. And Huntley seems to get away from them through the second half of the lap, but maybe a little bit weak in the first half of the lap. And that's where May is able to close right onto the rear bumper of the 96 car. Through a very quick left-hander of Surtees. Fastest corner on the circuit. And some debate as to whether it's third or fourth gear. I think third gear is probably the preferred gear through there, almost on the rev limiter though, as you hop over the kerb and then slam it down the gears again into clearways. And Clark Curve back out to the completion of another lap. Up all the top Langford in front of us is Mikey Doble, not David Chapman, because David Chapman has gone through. So Chapman has got himself ahead of Doble, but Doble is trying to come back at him as they come down the straight, but he doesn't dare go to the outside line because Tom Langford will be straight up the inside of him. So the three of them descend upon Paddock Hill Bend pretty much as one, but Chapman has gone through. Can Mikey Doble fight back, or is Langford going to be applying the pressure to him instead? Well, Chapman is defending just in case into move to uh, Druids. Uh, Mike Doble, excuse me, he's Doble Senior, isn't it, in this race, is not going to get through. So Chapman now needs to get his head down and show the pace that there's no doubt he's got. David Sharp, I've got to look at the inside of Luke Brows, but just a touch too far back. Brown's Hatch have added some new tarmac runoff areas, one there at the end of Graham, at the exit of uh, Graham Hill Bend, and one also on the exit of Druids, which the drivers are taking full advantage of. But you will still be caught out for exceeding track limits if you keep doing that. So they've just replaced the, the grass creek with some tarmac runoff area to try and prevent cars from losing too much grip if they run wide. That won't stop the clerk of the course penalising them, though, if they do exceed the track limits once too often. Across the line goes Chapman, you can see he's getting away now from Mike Dover and Tom Langford behind. Langford, though, seems to have some decent pace in this race. And we're looking to try and get past um, Dover as quickly as possible to go after Chapman. But this group of five or six cars now just making their way through Paddock Hill Bend. What a sight they make as they run right out to the edge of the curbing. And I'm going to make a move into Druids. A few people attempting it, but no, there's no way through. And Luke Browse is now... Um, yeah, sorry, still ahead of uh, David Sharp. I thought he'd lost the position there, but Sharp is still behind him. As they head down the hill, Matt Flowers is the white blue number three car who's trying desperately to become a part of this fight. As they head towards Surtees, Chapman getting away now. From the B 
big gaggle of cars behind. Tom Langford, I think, the one that's most likely to make a move here, and he's starting to force a few little mistakes out of Mike Doble. Doble just misses the apex fractionally there at Clearway. He's on wall with Langford as he very aggressively goes up through the keys across the start-finish line. Now, you don't get a huge slipstream effect from these cars, but it is certainly there, and that will be aiding his slipstream, uh, sorry, his uh, top speed down the uh, pit straight. And, Doble knows it, so he moves over to the middle ground to defend, but that means he might wash a bit wide on the exit. Langford clips the kerb, though, and that means that he too has to correct the slide. And in the end, there's no change, or is there? He sees a gap up the inside line, and Langford is going to go for it, but around the outside, look. Oh dear, goes Oliver Faller, and uh, there may have been a bit of contact there. We've got the 67 car of Adam Reed also trying to join in. Langford goes through, but amazingly, no other positions change. So Langford gains a place. Doble loses one, but he very nearly lost two or three there. Oliver Fowler, I think, got into the back of him, and that's what allowed Langford to actually complete the pass. Thomas should now be able to pull away, but can Oliver Fowler get through? Oliver Fowler right on the limit through Surtees, goes to the inside line, and yes, I think he's going to go through. So Oliver Fowler picks up a place, and this could open the floodgates here, although Adam Reed himself runs a bit wide. David Sharp is on the inside of uh, Luke Browse. It is all going on in that fight just at the back end of the top 10. On board with Simon Welch, who's a few positions further back. We are still side by side, and yes, David Sharp up the inside now of Luke Browse. Should be able to complete the maneuver into Paddock, although Browse was late on the brakes. No, the purple car goes through, so uh, David Sharp gaining one place. So what's happened there? Langford's gained the position, so too has Oliver Fowler. Doble's lost two, and then at the back of the group, there has now finally been the change between Browse and Sharp, and Oliver Fowler is very wide and very sideways, and that could allow Mike Doble to go straight back through. They're side by side down the hill. Inside line is held by Fowler. Doble on the outside, he can't execute the switchback maneuver, because Adam Reed is up the inside of him. There's a bat marker as well, as if this wasn't spicy enough. And I think that's going to box Doble in. Yes, so Reed goes through, and David Sharp tries to take advantage as well. Mike Doble has to be careful here. He could lose three or four positions in one fell swoop. He's limiting the damage, sort of, in that only one more car has gone through. But the race that was looking fairly promising for Doble a few minutes ago is now slowly starting to unravel. David Sharp and Matt Flowers behind him now. So Flowers has somewhere got past Luke Browse as well. It's all going on, isn't it, in this group of uh, cars that have been very close since the start of the race and then now really starting to get to it as we move into the second half, the final race of the day here at Brands Hatch. And it does seem that Mike Doble is what the cork in the bottle. David Sharp now going up the inside at Druids and should be able to execute this one, although Doble squeezes him onto the grass as they turn into the corner. And of course, Doble, if he goes right around the outside at Druids, will have the inside line at Graham Hill Bend and he will use that to try and hold on to the position. Can Matt Flowers take advantage of this as well? He's going to try and get up the inside of David Sharp. He will get up the inside of David Sharp and has the inside for the next corner as well. It's a brave man that will run around the outside at Surtees. And David Sharp sensibly, I think, backs out of it. And good news, he's got his old uh, sparring partner from earlier in the race. Uh, Luke Browse right behind him again, or has he? Because Sharp is actually back on the inside of Flowers. The position's changing and rechanging quicker than almost than you can uh, keep up with them. There's another car diving into the pit lane just in front of them, I noticed. As we're back on board with Simon Welch, he takes a very tight line out of clearways. And the 76 car involved in quite a tussle here, a little bit further down the order. 45, I think that is, isn't it, that's uh, leading that group of cars. That's Brendan Murphy, the silver machine packed with the fight of the race, really. This has been the best race we've got anywhere in the field right now, and it's still not settled. Simon Welch, though, heads up the hill, number 15 in that uh, little group, as well as Jim Barrett. And Simon Welch, the black and green car, just at the tail end of the group, another new livery on that car. He does like to shake things up over the winter to Simon, and always comes back with pristinely prepared cars. Excuse me, Simon, the, the black car with the purple wheels, excuse me. I thought that was a very different livery on his car for a moment. Yes, the trademark purple Simon Welch wheels still in place. With green headlights, he turns through the left-hander. It's the 164 car behind him, which is Thomas Middleton, who we saw battling away in the previous race with Reese Claydon. He, in the Seabro livery machine, is uh, keeping a watching brief on that trio of cars just in front. It's getting quite close, actually, between Jim Barrett and... Um, 45 machine of Brendan Murphy, and in fact, Barrett having a look at the inside of Paddock, can't get through. 
And Simon Welch down there holding each other up. And look at the extra speed that Simon can take through Panakil Ben. Barrett is now up the inside at Druids. And I think he's going to go through. And Simon Welch is surely going to try and follow him. But Brendan Murphy had other ideas. Chops across. And somehow that took some doing. Trying to thread the needle there and find a gap back in line. But he did manage to. And so only the one place lost. Back with Oliver Faller, who seems to be sideways every time we see him. Very spectacular to watch indeed. He's got Adam Rees behind him now. In the 67 machine. Sort of worked BMW inspired liveries, which are very popular, understandably, in this one mate BMW championship. Back with the race leader, though, we haven't seen much of Ian Jones in this race. In race one, he was hounded by Stephen Daly all the way through, and in this one, not the case. And uh, as he drops down the hill now into Graham Hill Bend, he's looking good for a second win of the year. That was Craig Arkell going a lap down. Double race victory here potentially for Ian Jones. Now, Ian, as I said, won his first race as well. So, if things finish as they are now, he will take the championship lead by something like one or two points leaving Brands Hatch. He also set the fastest lap in his first race and unsurprisingly holds the fastest lap in this one as well. So, it's going to be a maximum points haul for Ian Jones. And that is not to be sniffed at here at the first round of the season. Across the start finish line he goes. Ben Huntley, though, uh, keeping a, a watching brief, flashing the lights there for Ian Jones. He's not celebrating the victory just yet. There is traffic in front of him that he's trying to warn of his presence. Back with Simon Welch. Now, Brendan Murphy is the silver car still in front of us. And are they starting to be dropped a little bit now, potentially by Jim Barrett? No, Barrett, I think, is still not far in front of them. So this is very much still a three-way fight as they go through clearways and they're fighting for about 16th or 17th position here so inside the top 20 still well worth fighting for though but, uh, if you go and have a word with the drivers after the races often the most excitable drivers are the ones that were running outside of the top 10 because they get involved in these sort of battles oh Simon Welch is off though he's off oh and he's over Simon Welch with a big accident into Panakil Ben well that was a lot more excitable than we wanted it to be and I'm sure Simon Welch feels the same what on earth happened there must have been contact surely the car suddenly just veered left and rolled in the gravel trap and I think up against the barrier so that was a very sizable shunt there for Simon Welch hopefully he is okay Ian Jones is about to come past the scene of the accident and well, what an accident it was the car thankfully has righted itself it's back on all four wheels but uh, that will have left Simon Welch rather shaken I'm sure Ian Jones though the race leader negotiates the treble five car of John Williams the red machine stays dutifully out of the way Being sideways there though is Ian Jones with his lights ablaze in the background, still running in a fairly comfortable second position, with David May still your Masters leader in third, but with Wayne Flint still right on his tail. So that race uh, has been raging all the way through, but with no change of the position since the first lap. It's John King going through there, the number 35 car, full cup racer. He was part of a four-hour endurance race here at Brands Hatch the day before in the opening round of the Fun Cup Championship. And now taking his hand for the first time at the wheel of the fun bikes car in the uh, BMW Compact Cup. Ian Jones then comes across the start finish line onto another lap. The checkered flag is not yet out. Or with Keith Towers here. Uh, sorry, David Chapman, excuse me, chasing down Keith Towers. And in fact, he is with Keith Towers. Oh, hang on, that's not supposed to happen. The, the gear stick has come off in his hand. I did very rarely see that. David Chapman, well, is he going to be able to finish with that? I don't know. There was some of the gear stick left. It was just the top of the, the gear knob that came off. And David Chapman, who was catching Keith uh, Towers fairly rapidly there towards the end of the race, he was in seventh place and could potentially win on for a top five or six. But more than likely not now so a really dramatic end to the race here for quite a few drivers up and down the order Ian Jones will just be glad to see the chequered flag I think at this rate we are on the final lap of the race now he's lapped John King successfully there are no more back markers for Ian Jones to have to negotiate Ben Hundley is closing in here in the final lap or so there is Ben diving up the inside of John King himself and he's not going to be able to get through uh, to the tail of uh, Ian Jones's car at least Ian is going to come through though and see the chequered flag for the second time today at Brands Hatch Ian Jones is a winner in the BMW Compact Cup and he will take the early championship lead. Ben Huntley takes another solid second place finish 1.7 seconds back at the flag with David May third, Wayne Flint fourth, Matt Parks fifth and Keith Towers sixth, Tom Langford was seventh, Oliver Faller eighth, Adam Reed ninth and Matt Flowers rounding out the top ten. So it doesn't look like 
after David Chapman did make it to the flag. Mike Dobel, Luke Browse, David Sharp, Alessandro Albano in the top 15, ahead of Martin Gadsby, who recovers well from his race one non-finish, then Jim Barrett, Brendan Murphy, and the rest filing in behind. The list of retirements, yes, look at that. David Chapman is uh, not going to make it to the flag, unfortunately. Simon Welch, Will Davison, Tim Scott Andrews, James Stanbury, Paul Maguire, a non-starter, as we mentioned, so too was Lee Dendy Sadler after their issues in the earlier race. A dramatic race, though, but a brilliant start to the season for Ian Jones. This now means you are ahead of everyone in the championship. Good. I hope it stays that way now. Um, perfect day. Absolute perfect day. Everybody drove well. Good old compact cup. So, two race victories at Brands Hatch puts Ian Jones eight points in front in the early title race, with Stephen Daly and Ben Huntley tied for second. Mark Skeets is fourth and is tied for the Masters lead with David May. Well, it's been an enthralling opening day of racing in the Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup. Three action-packed encounters, two won by Ian Jones, but you never can keep Stephen Daly down for long. He will be fighting Ian for the championship all the way. One or two drivers had a few mishaps along the way, a couple of lengthy repair jobs to be undertaken before the next round at Alton Park in a few weeks' time. Make sure you keep up with all of the action on the BRSCC YouTube channel and join us next time at Alton Park for the next round of what promises to be a fantastic 2019 campaign. Pain.